Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tuesday, August 11th, 2015. Thanks for tuning in to episode 43 of Cardoodle. This is Jim. Working on the Christmas cartoon again this week. In this shot, just for fun, two of Santa's elves are dressing up like him and dancing around a little bit. And I'm actually creating an entirely separate skeleton for the Santa costume. Now in Anime Studio, you have a bone rigging system that allows you to rotate points or layers on a specific axis that you decide. And you can connect these different axes to each other, creating a sort of skeleton for each of your characters. But the bone rigging system actually is pretty versatile. You don't necessarily need to use it on a character. You can use it on all kinds of things. Like in Time Selfie, I used the bone rigging system on the curtains when they kind of blew to the side when the time traveler arrived. And what this means is since I'm working with vectors, I don't have to work with each individual point over and over again. It actually shaves a lot of time off of the animation process. In addition to this, I'm using smart bones to make sure that the sleeves bend in such a way that it looks natural. Now, smart bones are actually a really handy tool because when you're dealing with vector animation as well as bone animation, your points are always going to move along the shortest path. But the shortest path is not always the correct one, not always the one that makes sense when you're looking at an animation. So what smart bones do is they allow you to customize where the points go whenever you adjust the position of the bone. It'll make a little bit more sense when you actually see it on the screen. You'll see me manipulating a bone and then seeing me move a point to a specific area as well as changing, you know, stuff like the roundness of the curve. It's an incredibly useful tool, and if you are using Anime Studio and haven't tried this out yet, go ahead and give it a shot. Smart bones are how I do stuff like head rotation and all sorts of other things. I used to have to use blend morphs, which are kind of a clunky system to do the same thing. So maybe you're asking yourself, Jim, why are you working on the Christmas cartoon again? Didn't you say you had this big project to come out in September? Well, this is actually it. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, unsubscribe. I see Christmas decorations to September in retail stores. I go to YouTube to escape from that. I don't want that on my internet. See ya. Hang on a second. I've kind of been a little bit dishonest with you all. This is not actually a Christmas cartoon. This is a cartoon about the fact that all these different places try to shove Christmas down our throat three months ahead of time. I am almost done with all the artwork, and I'm actually going to begin animating some of the shots later this week. Just like the previous cartoons, I've been taking community input on what should be in it, and because I've been working on this for a long time, you can check out three episodes of Cardoodle and comment on them if you want to have a little bit of input. Each episode asks for something specific to contribute to this cartoon. Those episodes of the blog are episodes 29, 32, and 36. I'll put a link in the video as well as in the description. And like I've said in previous episodes, there will be a little trailer for this by the end of the month. Now originally when I started recording this episode of the blog, I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of why Santa Claus is said to have elves. But honestly, there is just so much content there and so much history and so many different cultures contributing to the whole Santa Claus mythology. I think I'm going to save that to maybe December because there's just too much to go over. But I mean, just as a quick overview, there's the monster known as the Krampus. There's the very uncomfortably racist Black Peter. And then the American tradition of a Christmas elf actually borrows heavily from something called the Tompte, which is like a tiny gnome-like creature from Scandinavian folklore. And then there are like dozens of different versions of Santa Claus himself to even go into. So I'm thinking I'm going to save this stuff for some future blogs, because there is just way more info that I could go over in just a week. Once again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Remember to check out those three episodes I mentioned earlier and go ahead and comment if say you want to have your name on Santa's nice list or a funny joke printed on one of the stockings hanging by the fireplace. Also remember to like and comment on this video and do like your mom told you and share. I'll see you wonderful people next week.